for a few times. <laughs> Heavenly Father, what a blessing to know you through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. What a blessing to be able to come to you with all of our needs, with all of our problems, Lord, knowing that you know each one of our thoughts and that you know our heart. We love you, Lord. We want to serve you. Help us not to neglect to fulfill the purpose for which you have called us, and that is to share the good news of your love for mankind, with our neighbors, with our friends, with those that we have contact with in our daily lives, Lord. We do thank you, Lord, for this church body, and we pray, Lord, that you would be with each one of us. Give us courage not to be ashamed of the gospel, Lord, to encourage our leaders. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them and give them wisdom and guidance. We pray for this daughter-in-law of the dance, Lord, that you would uh, have your will in her life, Lord, and may she feel your presence and, and uh, receive the healing. But draw her to yourself, Lord, in this time of her need. Also be with Jeff Mays. I uh, pray, Lord, that you would be with him and that he'll be able to uh, be back with us again and that you would give him healing. Be with Margaret Russell. Thank you, Lord, for her trust in you. And Pray that she would be with her and, uh, and the doctors, that uh, she'll be uh, having surgery, and may everything come out all right. Thank you again that we are in your hands and that you know all about us. Be with the missionaries, Lord, that we support, and also those that are uh, supported by other uh, churches, Lord. But we pray that you would be with them as they share the gospel to those around the world. And we are looking forward to your coming, Lord. Help us to be faithful, and uh, we ask, Lord, also that you would be with the country that you have allowed us to live in, and uh, be with the leaders, and uh, Lord, may your perfect will be done. Thank you that you're in charge. We 
give you the praise. Be with our church meeting too, our service, Lord. Be with the pastor. Help him to be able to give the message of your love and uh, as you've given to him, Lord. May he give it in the power of the Holy Spirit. We give you the praise. Be with John too in our meeting uh, right now. And uh, may we, Lord, honor you. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, well, turn to Joshua 23. And I want to, before we start this morning, I'll just go back in and read the last three verses that we read last Sunday because some of you weren't here. And this kind of leads into, hopefully you, uh, <laughs> God has taken the children of Israel, the Jews we call them today, the Hebrews, but his chosen people as a group, he has taken them into the promised land, and he has given them victory in war over the, the pagan residents that were there with instructions to kill every man, woman, and child. They have done that, and they have left a few places unconquered. This is a picture of our experience of Jesus. God has offered us access to a life with him where he cares for us and he takes care of us and he loves us and he helps us with our problems and so on. But within that land, if you want to call it the land, there are some problems that we have due to our carnal nature. And those things come up every now and then when we lose our temper. We have a, you know, a lot of uh, 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 reason. When, when we uh, think sinful thoughts and we do different things that keep us from enjoying full fellowship with God, we are living out the picture that Joshua paints of taking the promised land and getting rid of those things that keep us from enjoying full fellowship with God. It's, it's uh, uh, our Christian walk from the time we first accept Christ as our Savior until we die. We are working to clear the land of the pagan influence that is born within us because we're, we're, we're born with a physical body that has not been regenerated if we know Jesus, then we have, our spirit is regenerated, but we are still stuck in this body, which gives us trouble. So, um, understanding what Joshua is doing is understanding our Christian walk and what, what Christian life is. And it's, uh, uh, we're in here, different church backgrounds and so on, but it's the, it's the same. It's, it's God bringing a people in that will worship him. And that's what, what we are, and we are his chosen people, so to speak, now. Uh, because, you know, he says these words, you didn't just choose me, we didn't choose God, he chose us. And we are then living out what, what is here. So the picture that Joshua is painting is very pertinent to what we're living today, the way we live. Uh, so, uh, just to close out what we were uh, do doing and, and to lead into today's lesson then, uh, let's read, uh, start uh, with 31, verse 31 of chapter 22, and that will lead us into 23. Then Phineas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said to the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, the children of Manasseh, this day we receive that the Lord is among us because you have not committed this treachery against the Lord. Okay, 
If you remember, the three tribes that are going to settle on the east side of the river, and here I'm a little handicapped without the map because I, I, I would be pointing to it as, as a reminder, uh, <clears throat> had fought with the nine tribes on the west side of the river. Now they're going home to their own, to their own land, and they have built an altar there. We have a picture of an old altar that it was huge. It'd be as big as this building, uh, so that everybody could see it from, from all around. And then uh, they were accused by their brothers of doing something that was not in God's will. And so they settled the thing, and that was the whole lesson last week. Here was a real disputability, if you want to use that term, uh, between the the uh, the children of God, the children of Israel, uh, God's chosen people, and how they settled it by talking and looking and thinking rather than arguing and shouting was, to me, is, is a tremendous lesson for the church today. It would be a tremendous lesson for all parts of society, for families, uh, and um, any place that uh, uh, people get together. That was a good example. We won't repeat that, but that's what we're coming to. So he has said, now that you have done all this, uh, verse 32, and Phineas, the son of Eliezer the priest, and the rulers returned from the children of Re Reuben, the children of Gad, to the land of Gilead, the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought back word to them. So, so they brought back that they had discussed this problem and solved it. Is basically what they did. And the children of Israel blessed God, and they spoke no more of going against them in battle. Okay, it was, they, they were ready to go to fight over this thing. But they should not have built an altar to God in that place. You know, God didn't tell you to put it there. And, um, but they explained to them it was to be a sign of peace between all the tribes. And they accepted it that way. Verse 34. The children of Reuben, the children of Gad, called the altar witness. The name. Uh, in the, if you're looking at the old King James, they called the altar Ed. <laughs> gave him that name. That would really be a, a word which uh, can be loosely translated to be a witness. And it's a witness between the two tribes. And uh, it is uh, a witness, actually, between us between the two tribes, that the Lord is God. In other words, it's a, a thing that is not a worship ceremony. It is not anything that means anything as it does to the pagans. What it means is we have settled our differences, and now that is not going to stand between us and God. That's a lesson for today. When we are at war, so to speak, or arguing with somebody about anything, but especially about what's in the Bible, what does that do to our relationship with God? Unified. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It, it harms. It gets in the way. It is uh, something to be over, overcome. Okay, so that's the attitude that we are um, supposed to be taking. We want to... We want God's presence. We don't want to, if, if uh, uh, you know, somebody does something we don't like in church, we don't want to start an argument in the division of the church. We want to settle it and, and settle it in front of God and have him then be glorified in the whole thing. So let's take a look now with that in mind. We get into chapter 23. By the way, chapter 24 is the last chapter in the book. We're almost there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go ahead. Don't you think these people on the west side of the river kind of blew things out of proportion from a, a hearsay? Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, you know, I didn't need to ask questions that ever happened in, in groups of <laughs> churches or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They were going by hearsay. Yeah. They, they, they knew the altar was there, and they assumed that it was going to be a division between them and the others. Oh, they've got their own altar on the other side of the river. And that's not what it was. It was 
to the big enough that they could all see it if they got close enough. I mean, you can't see it from a long ways away, but quite a ways. Right. Um, but don't you think that's also a, uh, something, you know, they were thinking they're starting another denomination. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of denominations, which I think is a, Satan would like to use that as a division, but if people are worshiping and proclaiming the gospel, no matter what they call themselves, if they're proclaiming the gospel, serving the Lord, and believing the Bible, teaching the Bible, I think we can have fellowship. We, we can, we do, and we have fellowship with other Christians who are not Baptists. <laughs> I was just discussing that earlier this morning, that uh, um, there are the basics that we need to go after, and we can see that there are many different churches in, in McMinnville, and, and some of you, uh, if I had everybody in here raise their hand who had ever been to a church in McMinnville, it would be quite, quite a few. Um, and, and you know, what um, uh, Al said is true, church splits and so on. We have to remember that we, the conservative Baptists, are split from the American Baptists 100 years ago, or in the 1930s or something like that. Um, it happens because people are people. We're people. We, we do have, have the ways of picking up the things and the attitudes of the world around us. And uh, so that, that causes these divisions. Okay, 23.1. Now it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies. They had done all this fighting, had conquered the promised land, and they're living there, and they're supposed to go about their business now and worship God and enjoy the land that God has given them that Joshua was old and advanced in age. And Joshua called for all of Israel, to their elders, to their heads, and to their judges, to their officers, and said to them, I am old, advanced in age. <laughs> okay. Um, Joshua was going to live, he thought he was ready to die, and he died at uh, about 110 years of age. Remember, Joshua was born a slave in Egypt. And starting his uh, growing up in maturity, and then had gone and been with Moses, and and then he was in the desert for 40 years while all the other old people died, except Caleb and Joshua who were faithful, and then he has entered the promised land and has been fighting for about seven years, so he is an old an old man at this time. Okay. Uh, I am old. You know, verse 3, you have seen all that your Lord, the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he who fought for you. Okay. They have defeated all their enemies not because they were such good soldiers. For one reason. God was with them. God was with them. They, Okay, see, I have divided to you by lot these nations that remain. He divided up the whole land of Israel to the different tri 12 tribes and to be an inheritance for your tribes from the Jordan, uh, the Jordan River with all the nations that I have cut off as far as the great sea westward. So uh, here again, I don't have the map, but uh, you can picture it. The Jordan River running from north to south is the division from there to the Mediterranean Sea is given all the land in between. John? It's interesting that the mantra of Hamas and the sympathizers is from the river to the sea. Yeah. Meaning the expulsion of the absolute annihilation of this promise, this situation, this inheritance that we've been talking about in Joshua. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there, therein is the, the problem in the Middle East right now with the fighting. Uh, they were given their portion of land in 1948, 
a large portion, uncontested, but because they wanted the river to the sea, <laughs> they wanted it all, and they wanted Israel gone. They've been fighting since, since then. It'll, it'll soon be 80 years. Uh, and uh, uh, the river to the sea is the rallying cry of the Israelis, but now the Hamas is using that. We're going to own, in other words, we're going to push Israel into the sea. And is, Israel is um, uh, just trying to hold on to what they have. Because there's a lot of uh, us that can sympathize with Joshua when he said, I'm very old. <laughs> uh, I wonder if you'd take a census of it. Uh, did anybody ever in their lifetime read the Leon Uris's book, The Exodus? Anybody? Well, I remember it very well, and it was the story of the expats from Nazi Germany on board ships that were tooling around in the Mediterranean Sea without a country. And that was the beginning of the difficulty we see now when the, they were allowed to come ashore in Palestine and claim a homeland for the Jews, primarily to keep them out of England, if you remember, <laughs> the Balfour Declaration. So there's a lot of history here about this situation that was once conquered, and then it was forgotten for many, many years, and then the Jews without a homeland reclaimed and they were allowed to reclaim, and that was the issue. And so the West Bank originally became the east side of the Jordan River, related to Jordan. But the West Bank eventually was given over to appease the international community, and then Gaza was given to appease the international community. And so now today, in the United Nations, we have an, another appeasement process going on. Yes. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's absolutely true. You remember Moshe Dayan standing on top of the Temple Mount and saying, we have conquered. <laughs> and he took, took down this crescent, uh, this Muslim sign, and put up an Israeli flag and within uh, six hours, I think it was, uh, they had made the decision to give it back to the Muslims. But why, are, why is Israel in this fix that this is in today? What, what is the basic, one basic reason? They've forgotten God. They disobedient, didn't believe in God, they didn't, they didn't believe. They, 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 as I've said before, the Old Testament, which is most of this Bible, uh, would be very short if the Jews had been just obedient <laughs> and done what God wanted them to. Uh, but instead, uh, all the uh, bad prophecies are, are coming true. Um, in, anyway, uh, God went to all this trouble, gave it to them, and uh, uh, they, verse 4, we said, they, we have divided as an inheritance from your tribes, cut off the other nations, verse 5, and the Lord your God will expel them before you and drive them out of your sight, so you shall present, possess their land as the Lord God promised you. All they had to do was believe, believe that promise. So, here we are as Christians, we support Israel because the Bible tells us very clearly that those who bless Israel will be blessed, and those who curse Israel will be cursed. However, we must recognize that Israel is not 100% free of guilt by any means. They have reaped the reward of their disobedience, and that's, that's where, where we are today. Um, 
Turn to Leviticus chapter 20. And start at verse 20, 22. This is God's instructions to Moses, who is not going to enter the promised land, but to give, this is for the people. He wrote it down. This is the law. This is God's instructions to them. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and perform them, that the land where I'm bringing you to dwell may not vomit you out. <laughs> Okay. And you shall not walk in the statutes of the nation which I am casting out before you, for they commit all these things, and therefore I abhor them. But I have said to you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it to you to possess a land flowing with milk and honey. Isn't that something? You shall, this is God talking, you shall inherit their land. Okay, look at the mess they're in now because of disobedience. I am the Lord your God who has separated you from the people. Um, this is an important, uh, an important concept, and we need to uh, be thinking about that. And I, uh, when we get here, ready to close in a few minutes, uh, I'm going to come back to this concept. Keep this in mind. You shall separate yourself. Okay. You shall therefore distinguish, and he goes into uh, some of the Mosaic law, I'll skip in verse 25, you can read it yourself, and you shall be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy, and have separated you from the people that you should be mine. Okay, uh, an important concept. How long did they keep those instructions once they got into the promised land. We don't know for sure, but I'd say about five seconds. <laughs> and they started marrying the pagan women. They started following the pagan practices. They started worshiping the, the statues and the pagan deities almost immediately. Unbelievable. But that is Moses' instruction. And uh, let's, let's go down to Go back to the New Testament for a minute. Acts 26, 18. Surely they are using these, uh, uh, the first books of the Old Testament in their temples now. Uh, they are. Yeah, now most of the Jewish Bible is just the, the Pentateuch. Yeah. The Bible. Today. Yes. Or yesterday or whenever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and some <laughs> are waking up to the fact that they have been dis disobedient. And that's why they're in this, this, this fix. Although, uh, remember that their eyes are kind of shaded, blinded when they rejected Christ. And that we are in the time of the Gentiles when we, we actually have access to the Holy Spirit to see the Jewish scriptures more clearly than the Jews themselves. And that will end soon with the rapture, but this is uh, uh, the rapture and the tribulation, and, the, and uh, this is going to change. But right now, we are in the times of the Gentiles. Okay, now, uh, this is... Jesus talking to Paul when he appeared to him on the road to Damascus. Jesus himself is going to say these words. But ride, uh, and Paul was struck blind and off, fell off his horse. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose. Remember, this is Jesus talking. To make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will reveal, yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people 
as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Okay, for what purpose? So he's giving him the gospel and sending him out. God, Jesus has already uh, been crucified and risen from the dead, and he comes back and appears to Paul to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light. This is the purpose of the gospel which we preach. This is the purpose that we exist, actually. Hey, there's a world out there that needs <laughs> to hear the message, right? Yeah. And from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Hey, that's turned from Satan to God. Satan to God. In other words, they're making a division. They're, the, everyone that you meet in this church, in, the, in uh, school, at work, out on the street, is either a minister of Satan or a minister of God. People say, well, I haven't really thought about it. I don't think. No, then you're a minister of Satan. If we are born with a sin nature which separates us from God, there is no in-between. That's a tough thing. You don't hear that in a lot of people standing up here. Uh, well, here in this church, you will. But <laughs> in churches in general, uh, that is an absolute inescapable truth. Because when the next event happens that we expect that is the rapture of the church, the trumpet will sound, or people are going to, to pass away and die, there's only two places, one of two places, that they're going to go to heaven, or they're going to spend eternity with Jesus, or they're going to spend eternity with Satan. There's, there's, there's no in between. Yes? Um, when the trumpet sounds, will only Christians hear it, or will everyone? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you in a couple of years. <laughs> um, it, it, it doesn't say for sure, but I, I think that the trumpet will sound and probably only the, the Christians will hear it. And the shout is going to be, this is my assumption in here, all of our spiritual names, we all have a spiritual name. We know Jesus, we have a spiritual name. We don't know what it is yet, but that instant we will recognize it. And so he will, he will shout, Al, Mary, you know, Dorothy, all at once, bloop, and uh, we're gone. It's just going to be like that, real quick. Uh, and it's just the next big event that is scheduled to happen. Did it happen today? Okay. Um, uh, John. Oh, yeah, John, excuse me. He deliberately doesn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said that. Uh, you, you said a little while ago that if the Jews had obeyed the Old Testament, that our Bible would be very short because of what? Oh, uh, the amount of time that is in there straightening them out from the problems they caused themselves in their own disobedience. Okay. Time after That's, time. That's fine. I, I understand that. But if that had been the solution, then, in other words, God demanded obedience, not, uh, what's the word? Uh, Sacrifice. No, uh, conformity to the rules and regulations. God demands obedience rather than sacrifice or anything else. The sacrifice is a form of obedience. But it's not just observance that God wanted. He wanted obedience. Now, if, if they had been obedient, then we would be left out. Us Gentiles. True. <laughs> Okay, that, that's true. They, <laughs> the because Jews were set aside, and, and that let us Gentiles in. Otherwise, there would, would, would be. However, we, we got to 
understand, God does not live in time. God has lived living eternity past and eternity future all at the same time as well as, as present. All we understand is the present. And so, disobedience started with Adam and Eve. That's what? Disobedience started with Adam and Eve. Yes, 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 yes. It started and we inherited, didn't we? Okay, I, I need to, to read Joshua 23 and verses 6 through 13 to, to, to make this, <laughs> all of this rambling, and we're almost out of time, but all this rambling makes sense. Okay, 23, starting with 6. Therefore, be very courageous to keep all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, lest you turn aside from the right hand to the left, and lest you go among these nations, those who will remain among you, you shall not make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. So we know that they disobeyed that right away. You shall not serve them or bow down to those gods, but you shall hold fast to the Lord your God. Hold fast to the Lord your God. What an instruction and a warning for today's world. As you have done this, day for the Lord has driven out from before you great and strong nations see it starts the passage out being strong and courageous God has already done the work we are vexed and hindered by these our full the things of the world that are all around us that are in direct opposition to the gospel to our instructions in Christ driven out before great nations but as for you no one has been able to stand against you to this day one man of you shall chase a thousand okay, this, this is what they have the power to do he who fights you as he promised you therefore take careful heed to yourself that you love the lord your god okay? and love is an action word it's not say yeah i love you god and going on love is something we continually do because we yield ourselves to him and serve him and seek what he wants for us and try to be uh, as pleasing as we can and let him work through us rather than making have him work for us that is, that is not the correct attitude or else if indeed you do go back and cling to the remnant of these nations they okay, cling to the remnant of these nations if we have the same instructions then we can go back and cling to some of the things of the world that we supposedly left behind that's, that's the thrust of i think of this section of, of the gospel is the temptation we have because we are living in this worldly body which is subject to temptations and we are continually bombarded are we not amen okay uh, make marriage these nations among you and make marriages with them and go into them and they to you for know for certain that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations from before you See, now pay close attention to that and the, the last little bit of this passage but they shall be snares and traps and scourges on your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from this good land that the Lord has given you is this a warning for the church? I have seen in my <laughs> lifetime and, and that there's, there's even um, some people in here that have been around longer than I have. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, I have seen such a change in the way church is practiced in many many denominations i'm going to single anybody out here too much i might slip and do that but uh, for the most part it has been downhill amen we used to have uh, uh years ago in the church it was good not had to be in church it was good to be in sunday school and church and sunday evening service and wednesday service okay. why aren't we now even our church here who honors god and preaches the gospel and goes by the bible we have to cancel our sunday evening service 
is a drifting away to the point where there are churches right now that used to serve the gospel who are allowing and promoting some of the rainbow flag and different ideals which are contrary to the Bible, completely contrary, and being outed as being good. All because I think we as people, starting with our parents and grandparents, uh, um, have violated this instruction right here to stand and be courageous and be on the side of the gospel rather than on, on the other side. Yeah, on the side of the world. Uh, uh, we're, we're going to run out of time. But it's kind of, I hate to live, leave on a negative note because the other side of the coin is so great. Maybe we'll talk about the good side of the coin next week. Uh, and and uh, you won't stay home. The, but this, <laughs> this is such a truth. And Joshua is making it this many years ago. And it is still valid today. Amen. Yeah. The separation is a biblical principle and is a principle for our lives. We either live for God or we live for, for the devil. That's, there is no in between. No in between. And it's so great. It's so great to get up in the morning and say, you know, um, uh, I, some of you remember, how many remember Jesse Berry? He said, precise, yeah, I'll send a hand. Okay. Um, he, he used to say in his Texas draw, um, some people get up in the morning and they say, Good God, it's morning. <laughs> Some people get up in the morning and say, Good morning, God. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want to be. Those are the people we want to be. We don't want to be held back by being tied to the things that Joshua is warning us not to be tied to. Now, Titus 2.13 is a real good scripture for us to be thinking about and that we are to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's another section that says, and if we have that hope in us, we will purify, we will uh, in, endeavor to live for the Lord each day as we're looking for his coming. Looking for, looking for his coming, which we know, we know which may be getting close. But anyway, th thank you. I, I hope you. We're ending this on a positive note this morning. Okay. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your instruction. Thank you that you don't hold back. And some of this is a little harsh and hard to understand. But on the other hand, we see that to have nothing between us and you is our goal. And we want you to help us deal with those things in our lives and those attitudes which would keep us from full, complete, fellowship with our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, and with you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.